Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for evening prayer. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen and Alleluia. O gracious light, together. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed. Now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. Our appointed psalm for this evening in unison is Psalm 78, part two, together. How often the people disobeyed him in the wilderness and offended him in the desert. Again and again they tempted God and provoked the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember his power. In the day when he ransomed them from the enemy, how he wrought his signs in Egypt and his omens in the field of Zoan. He turned their rivers into blood so that they could not drink of their streams. He sent swarms of flies among them, which ate them up, and frogs which destroyed them. He gave their crops to the caterpillar, the fruit of their toil to the locust. He killed their vines with hail and their sycamores with frost. He delivered their cattle to hailstones and their livestock to hot thunderbolts. He poured out upon them his blazing anger, fury, indignation, and distress, a troop of destroying angels. He gave full rein to his anger. He did not spare their souls from death, but delivered their lives to the plague. He struck down all the firstborn of Egypt, the flower of manhood in the dwellings of Ham. He led his people like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. He led them to safety and they were not afraid, but the sea overwhelmed their enemies. He brought them to his holy land, the mountain his right hand had won. He drove out the Canaanites before them and apportioned an inheritance to them by lot. He made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. But they tested the Most High God and defied him and did not keep his commandments. They turned away and were disloyal like their fathers, they were undependable like a warped bow. They grieved him with their hill altars. They provoked his displeasure with their idols. When God heard this, he was angry and utterly rejected Israel. He forsook the shrine at Shiloh, the tabernacle where he had lived among his people. He delivered the ark into captivity, his glory into the adversary's hand. He gave his people to the sword and was angered against his inheritance. The fire consumed their young men. There were no wedding songs for their maidens. Their priests fell by the sword and their widows made no lamentation. Then the Lord woke as though from sleep, like a warrior refreshed with wine. He struck his enemies on the backside and put them into perpetual shame. He rejected the tent of Joseph and did not choose the tribe of Ephraim. He chose instead the tribe of Judah and Mount Zion, which he loved. He built his sanctuary like the heights of heaven, like the earth which he founded forever. He chose David, his servant, and took him away from the sheepfolds. He brought him from following the ewes to be a shepherd over Jacob, his people, and over Israel, his inheritance. So he shepherded them with a faithful and true heart and guided them with the skillfulness of his hands. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Judges. Then Jerubbaal, that is, Gideon, and all the troops that were with him rose early and encamped 
beside the spring of Herod, and the mountain of Midian was north of them, below the hill of Mork in the valley. And the Lord said to Gideon, The troops with you are too many for me to give to the Midianites into their land. Israel would only take the credit away from me, saying, My own hand has delivered me. Now therefore proclaim this in the hearing of the troops. Whoever is fearful and trembling, let them return home. Thus Gideon sifted them out. 22,000 returned and 10,000 remained. Then the Lord said to Gideon, The troops are still too many. Take them down to the water and I will sift them out for you there. When I say, This one shall go with you, he shall go with you. And when I say, this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So he brought the troops down to the water, and the Lord said to Gideon, All those who lap the water with their tongues as a dog laps, you shall put to one side. And all those who kneel down to drink, putting their hands to their mouths, you shall put on the other side. The number of those that lapped was 300, but all of the rest of the troop knelt down to drink water. So the Lord said to Gideon, with the 300 that I lapped, I will deliver you and give the Midianites into your hand. Let all the others go to their homes. So he took the jars of the troops from their hands and their trumpets, and he sent all the rest of Israel back to their own tents, but retained the 300. And the camp of Midian was below him in the valley. That same night, the Lord said to him, get up, attack the camp, for I have given it into your hand. But if you fear to attack, go down to the camp with your civic pura, and you shall hear what I say, and afterwards your hands shall be strengthened to attack the camp. Then he went down with his servant pura to the outposts of the armed men that were in the camp. The Midianites and the Amalekites and all the people of the east lay along the valley thick as locusts, and their camels were without number, countless as the sand on the seashore. So when Gideon arrived, there was a man telling a dream to his comrade, and he said, I had a dream, and in it a cake of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian and came to the tent and stuck to it so that it fell, it turned upside down, and the tent collapsed. And his comrade answers, this is no other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, a man of Israel. Into his hand God has given Midian and all the army. Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation. He worshiped and he returned to the camp of Israel and said, Get up, for the Lord has given the army of Midian into your hand. After he divided the 300 men into three companies and put trumpets into the hands of all of them and empty jars with torches inside the jars, he said to them, Look at me and do the same. When I come to the outskirts of the camp, do as I do. When I blow the trumpet, I and all who are with me, then you also blow the trumpets around the whole camp and shout, For the Lord and for Gideon. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our first canticle this evening is the second song of Isaiah. Again, let's join voices. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion and to our God for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating. So is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I have sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village, and when he put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Can you see anything? And the man looked up and said, 
I can see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he looked intently, and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Then he sent him away to his home, saying, Do not even go into the village. But Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist and others, Elijah and still others, one of the prophets. And he asked them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all of this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, but turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Things. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. Together, join voices with the words of the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and he has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, For he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church, and because it cannot continue in safety without your help, protect and govern it always by your goodness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And I call it for the presence of Christ.
Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts and awaken hope, that we may know you as you are revealed in Scripture and the breaking of the bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Let us pray for the mission of the church. O God and Father of all whom the whole heavens adore, let the whole earth also worship you and all nations obey you. All tongues confess and bless you and men and women everywhere love you and serve you in peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bring to the Lord those intercessions and needs that we keep in our heart and ask for his holy listening and direction as we receive his responses. Remember us, O Lord, when we come into your kingdom, as we move through the world, shall the world be moved through us. Keep us faithful to your teachings and never let us be parted from you. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining us for the daily office for evening prayer. We will see you again tomorrow evening. Remember, always leave the world a better place in the evening than you found it in the morning. God bless you. See you tomorrow. <laughs>